I'm probably correct in assuming everyone present knows why we are assembled. It is to draw your attention to a disgusting habit practiced by the wretched boy you see before me. You're aware, of course, that every school has strict rules against smoking. Yet the boy Monk saw fit, indeed has seen fit on previous occasions, to set the rule at defiance. It had been my intention to expel this boy forthwith. That I had second thoughts is solely due to an urgent intercession on the part of the boy's housemaster and some of his colleagues who begged me to allow the boy to stay until he had taken his matriculation exams. I was moved to consent. However you may take it as read, that no extenuating circumstances will influence me in the future. Any boy caught smoking, any boy in position of a pipe, any boy in possession of cigars or cigarettes will be sent home within the hour. In order to impress this upon your memory, I shall destroy this disgusting implement in your presence. Quickly. All right. Dismiss. Come on, Jensen. Put a bit of beef into it, lad. A bear boy will try. If I didn't have this knee of mine, I'd make mincemeat of you, lad. You're full of beans today? I've got to show the flag. Not so easy when you get no encouragement. I came here because this was a school that took sports seriously. He's sabotaging all I've done here, Carter. The lads know he doesn't give a damn about sport or anything else for that matter, except his damn purges. Have you noticed how many boys are going around looking over their shoulders? They don't know where he's going to strike next. He's been quiet enough since the pipe smashing. Oh, well, that's just it. He'll need to taste blood again soon, won't he? Bloody old vampire. I say, steady on, old man. Pardon me, no? Don't know how you keep so calm and cheerful. He's had his knife into you since the start. Well, I'm cheerful because I've made up my mind. I think it was the Stoker incident that decided me. I'd better things to do than hang around supporting a megalomaniac. First decent opening I get, I'm off. Hello, Islop. Afternoon, sir. Who's going to win the mile, then? Noakes, I reckon, sir. <laughs> Noakes? Never. Higgins will show him a clean pair of heels. I've had the lads in my house on early morning training. It's three to one against Higgins, Mr. Carter. Is it? Oh, 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 well, I might take you up on that, lad. Go on, get along with you. That'll be the day when you win a race yourself. 66 to one in the hop, step and jump, I'm afraid, sir. Cheeky beggar there. Ah, uh, he knows the form, though. Noakes will take the mile again. You fancy half a crown on it. Done. So you're going to resign, eh? Yes. Well... That's what I wanted to talk to you about. I've got one or two ideas I'd like your advice on. Why me? Why not? I'd only get sarcasm from Barnaby or Howarth. To tell you the truth, I haven't got a lot of time for those two these days. At least I know I'll get a straight answer from you. Well, that's one way of putting it. Yes. Oh, I know. We've behaved like bloody fools for long enough. Well, I suppose the least you could say is that we know the worst about each other. And damn it, you know, I think sometimes there are only two of us here who care about what's happening to this place. The others, they moan enough behind his back, but you and I, well... What did you want my advice about? Um, well, I don't know whether uh, you've ever thought about a preparatory school. Running one, I mean, not just teaching in one. No, I can't say as I have. Nice work if you can get it. Well, I haven't had my eye on one at the moment. 
As a matter of fact, I've just secured an option on it, and it's a good class school, too. It's only a hundred boys, but, well, I think that could be doubled if someone was prepared to get it by the scruff of the neck and shake it. And you'd be the man to do that, would you? I think so, yes. Well, I got a bit put by. Quite a bit, as a matter of fact. <laughs> Look, it really is a splendid prospect. I've looked into it from every angle I can think of. Well, if you're sure you want to resign and you've got the means to do it, I can't think of a better plan. Uh, best of luck. I can't think why you wanted my advice, though. Ah, well, now, suppose that you were thinking about the same sort of thing. How much money could you raise? Strict confidence, of course. I don't see what that's got to do with it. Oh, well, it, it's no secret. I, uh, I've saved nearly a thousand, and I haven't touched my gratuity. But my mother's still alive, and I have to keep some by for her. Oh, yes, of course you have. Beth and I insured our lives, with the children in mind. It seemed like a big joke at the time. It came to quite a lot of money. I didn't know what... I left it in the bank. Look, I'm most dreadfully sorry, old chap. I wouldn't have dreamt of um, painful memories. I can't seem to help putting my big foot into it. No, it's all right. No, you know, I, I was thinking when we were both up for the headship here, people like you, they don't like me. Oh, don't, no, don't interrupt, I know they don't. I don't mean to, but I just can't help rubbing people up the wrong way. You, Barnaby, Howarth, parents, oh, a good few of them come to respect me in the end, but you're the sort of chap they want to meet on speech days and sports days. Sort of figurehead, eh? Oh, you know, I don't mean that. I've always wished we'd been more friendly, you know. Don't know how things went wrong. Oh, dear. Well, you see, just, I just can't help saying the wrong thing. I'd better push off. Um, look, if there's a chance, I'd like you to consider the idea. What idea? What do you mean? I'm talking about the prep school man. I am offering you a joint headmastership. A joint headmastership? You and me? Come in. Ah, oh, come to gloat over Noakes's victory, have you, Isop? Sorry to disturb you, sir, but could I have a word? It's a bit urgent. Yes, well, I've got to run off anyway. We'll have that chat some other time. All right, his love, what's it all about? I've had some money stolen, sir. Are you sure you haven't just lost it? Yes, sir. Kept it stuffed in the toe of my slipper in my laundry basket. How much was there? Uh, eight pounds, twelve shillings and threepence, sir. What? What were you doing with that lot? My aunt, sir, supposed to put it in the post office, but kept it for a binge. You did, did you? I wish I could afford an eight-pound binge. Gage has had his fountain pen taken, sir. Yes, I know, he told me. And Harper had a post order taken the same day as my money went. Oh, dear. So we've got a thief in the house, eh? Hasn't happened for years. Well, you can be sure we'll find him in the end, and he'll have to be expelled. But it might take some time. I shouldn't count on seeing too much of your money back. It wasn't one of the boys, sir. I wish I shared your confidence. I know who took it, sir. You are? Cricklade, school servant. Just started cleaning in the house. I'm probably correct in assuming everyone present knows why we are assembled. It is to draw your attention to a disgusting habit practiced by the wretched boy you see before me. You're aware, of course, that every school has strict rules against smoking, yet the boy Monk saw fit, indeed has seen fit on previous occasions, to set the rule at defiance. It had been my intention to expel this boy forthwith. But I had second thoughts is solely due to an urgent intercession on the part of the boy's housemaster and some of his colleagues who begged me 